I'm Matt Ruchinski for Hornets.com, here with new Hornets owners Rick Schnall and Gabe Plotkin. Gentlemen, a pleasure to have you guys here. First off, just talk to us about how excited you are about this opportunity and taking charge of this team today. I am really excited, um, and I know Rick is too. You know, we love the game of basketball. Um, we've been close to it our whole lives. we got a really passionate fan base, and, you know, we're excited to begin the journey. You know, we, we can't wait to get to a point where this, this stadium is full of screaming fans and we're deep in the playoffs and things are going great, and so, you know, it's an exciting time. I think, uh, you know, this morning I almost sweat through this whole shirt, so I had to put this jacket on, so that gives you a sense of my excitement. Yeah, we're, we're, we're beyond excited. This has been a process that we've been working on for, for a long time, and the actual negotiation has been going on for over a year, but and I think we have a chance here to build uh, a great, great franchise, and uh, so we, we couldn't be more excited. We have a great ownership group, and uh, we have the beginnings uh, of a really exciting team, and uh, we have a, a great management team to work with. So, so we're we're uh, we're thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to have you as well, obviously. But can you talk to us and our fans about what was it about the Charlotte market that really drew you in? We know that you have connections, Gabe, to the Charlotte team and have been a minority owner. Rick, we know that you had connections in Atlanta as a minority owner. But what is it about Charlotte and this market that makes you guys feel this was the place to do this? We couldn't think of a better city, honestly. You know, obviously, they're the big, huge cities. But if you think outside of those big, huge cities, what would be a better city to have a chance to create something special and do it in conjunction with a with a excited fan base? This is up there among the top cities in the NBA. This is a city that you know the fans supported at an incredible level. You know when when the city uh, or when the team came to be in 1988 and. Um, you know, they had some initial success and, and some young stars and then things kind of went a little little south and then the team moved and, and, and came back and it was a transition you know from being the Bobcats to the Hornets and so we just feel like there's a lot of latent excitement that we can kind of drill into and you know that creates a significant upside and when we were um, learning more about the city and, and meeting different people around the city and even trying to raise money from other investors you know, we consistently heard the term and this wasn't us this was from others sleeping giant you know and I think it speaks to what the opportunity can be here if we execute on, on our vision and, and so we're excited to begin that. Well that's a perfect follow-up you mentioned executing on the vision for our fans out there, what is the vision that you all have for the Hornets and Hornets Sports and Entertainment? We'll start with you, Gabe, this time. Yeah, I think our vision is to become, you know, one of the premier, you know, franchises in the NBA. Um, you know, to be a great franchise, you know, it, you know, starts on the basketball court, obviously, and you got to be great at different elements of building a good basketball team. You got to be. You know, great at player development. You got to be great at scouting. You got to be great at analytics. You know, you got to have uh, great sports performance people, and and you have to have a vision and, and really be consistent in attaining that vision. I think for us, you know, following sports our whole lives, and not just in the NBA, other sports. You know, you see teams, you know, reach and stretch and, and make a lot of short-term decisions. I think for us, you know, it'll be a very long-term focused management team. Um, you know, there's no easy fixes. It's really hard to win. Um, but we'll take a patient approach and, and really look to, you know, to, to grow on the foundation that's already here. Uh, we're going to be a well-funded team. We're going we're gonna, to uh, hire and retain great people in our, in our organization, both in business and basketball. And if we can create a winning culture on and off the floor, we will have great success, and that's the vision. And we're, we're, one thing I'd say is we are incredibly competitive people by nature. And uh, sometimes you lose, but when you, when you put the right people in place and you put the right uh, culture and value system in place, you win a lot more than you lose, and, and that is our intention. What I'd like for our fans to know is you're incredibly competitive, and you guys have mentioned that. But a lot of that also comes from your fandom, doesn't it? You guys aren't just, and you've brought it up a couple of times, you grew up basketball fans. Can you just talk to our fans a little bit about where your passion for basketball stemmed from and why it's so important to you? Well, I grew up in Queens, New York, and so if you know New York City, uh, New York City is a, is a basketball uh, mecca in many respects. So I grew up playing on the cement playground at, at uh, PS 114. And uh, basketball's always been an integral part of my life. It's, it's, uh, I played uh, basketball since I, I can remember, and I've played it up until uh, I could, I don't know, I'm trying to come back, but I did have my knee replaced 
uh, in January. But um, funny thing is that not only do I have passion to play, obviously I've been a fan of the sport. Uh, again, I mean, posters on my wall from when I was a kid. It's what I love to do, watching Bernard King as a New York Knick when I was growing up on my black and white TV. So uh, it's always been part of my life. I actually, crazy story, is I, I met Michael at his fantasy basketball camp when I was turned 35 years old, which is now 20 years ago. Uh, and that, start, that was the start of the relationship uh, that we maintained through this transaction. And uh, uh, Michael obviously is uh, incredibly knowledgeable and passionate about basketball. And I think in those environments, he could see mine. And um, uh, the passion, I might, I might not be able to play like Michael, but the passion for the game uh, is similar and, 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 and everything about it. it. It is the best game uh, it, that I love sports. This is the best sport there is, uh, not only to play, but also to watch. And um, that's always been my belief. And the NBA is the best sports league in the world. So here we are uh, doing what we're passionate about, which is, which is dream come true kind of stuff. And I'm not sure, I heard you were taking some shots up on the practice court and weren't missing a whole lot at all, no. if at all today. If that no, was. but I mean, if you stretch me out to the NBA three-point line, it might be trouble. But. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gabe? Can you talk just a little bit about your passion and where that developed? Yeah, look, I, you know, I grew up in New England, which is, which is a big kind of sports town or area. Um, you know, my, my parents are both from Massachusetts, so you kind of had you know, the legacy of the Celtics in the 60s and the 70s. And you know, by the time I really got into basketball, it was kind of the tail end of, of the Larry Bird days. Um, but you had some great teams, and, and, and that was you know, super exciting. And I think, you know, for me, it was always the sport I just loved the most. I mean, you know, the, as a fan, you know, New England's had some incredible teams, be it the Red Sox, the Patriots, and, and, and the Celtics. Um, but you know, basketball was something that I always played. I played in high school. I used to go to camps. You know, even when I was running my business, I mean, we used to have a 6 a.m. morning game once a week, and you know, those games got competitive, and it was a lot of fun. I'd work with a trainer. You know, it's a sport my kids play. You know, it's the easiest sport to just go out there, grab a ball, and shoot around. You know, there's nothing like it in the world. And so, you know, I love the game. I've always watched the game. You know, I get excited for March Madness. I get excited for the NBA playoffs, and. Uh, you know, following the league, you know, you accumulate an incredible amount of knowledge without really trying to because you're a fan, you really care. And I think, you know, one of the, the benefits to that was, you know, when I sat down with Michael going back, you know, at this point five years, you know, I, I felt like, you know, he could sense that. And, and, you know, even just thinking about his career, I would remember different moments of his career because obviously, you know, those were, those were, this was pre, you know, uh, the last dance, but, but those moments were very, kind of poignant in my mind and you know, just being able to reflect on those and talk about those with him I think it conveyed how much I cared about basketball and that was important to him and you know Rick obviously had had the same uh, experience. I, I do think uh, you know Gabe and I met in, in 2019 and it was the beginning of this partnership but we recognized very quickly that we both had an incredible passion for the game and so to do this right and do it in the partnership that we're going to do it in uh, it's important that we both have a similar passion for the game and a similar uh, belief system in how to how to build a build a great franchise. Well, and you'll be building a team for a bunch of passionate fans. There's no doubt that our fans are the driving force behind everything that we do. So far, with your encounters with fans, what do you think of the fans in the Charlotte market and Hornets fans in general? Our attendance trends are really positive for a team that hasn't had as much success on the court. So, look, they're excited. I think we're excited. You know, when I look to when I got involved four or five years ago, you know, this was a team that didn't have a lot of youth and, you know, the ceiling was, was, was pretty limited on some level. I think now we're, we're at a point in time where, as a fan, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. And, and I sense that from them. And, you know, having the number two pick in the draft, signing our first max extension in, in Hornets history, having, you know, a young center who showed, you know, significant progress last year, you know, particularly on the defensive end, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be really excited. And I think this upcoming season, you know, it's all about, you know, continuing to develop these players and, and, and seeing where that's going to take us. But given their age and their youth, 
in my mind, this isn't like a one-year thing with, with this group. This group, you know, has duration to it, and, and that's, you know, that's something that a lot of teams try to get to, and I think we're starting at that point, so um, I can understand their excitement. And I guess in general, just being that commitment to building a winner, is that something that you just want to kind of drive home to Charlotte Hornets fans? Absolutely. That, that, is, that, is, our, that is our goal. That is our intention, and um, you, you, you shouldn't do this if you don't have that intention and so we, we have that intention and we also uh, we think have uh, the expertise to work with this team to help make it a reality. Um, I, I do think we have great fans in Charlotte and frankly all the Carolinas. I mean this is, I, I come from five, eight years in Atlanta. Um, Atlanta is a great city but it's not a basketball town, it's a football uh, town in many respects. This is a basket. This is bat. This is this is the mecca of maybe Indiana. You could argue this is the mecca of basketball. So to be able to ha own and be part of the professional franchise in North Carolina is is, is incredible. And you know, in, in in many respects, this is a community asset. We're stewards for our fans um, and, and the community at large. And it's a partnership. It's a partnership with the fans. It's a partnership with the city. We're all in it together. And, and I think we all have the same goal, which is to win, but to win in the right way. When Gabe had mentioned, you know, the pieces that are in place here for you, Rick, how excited are you about when you look at this team and see what's shaping out and what is being created here? And what are your expectations? Yeah. Well, look, last year was a disappointing year for the team. Uh, I've watched the team closely, uh, very closely over my last year, eight years in the league, and obviously we're in the same conference uh, and division. And um, uh, two years ago, the team was, was on the verge in the play-in game, unfortunately lost to Atlanta uh, in the play-in game. But there is, there is some real talent here. There's some young, exciting talent. Obviously, we just committed a long, to a long-term contract with Lamelo. He's 22 years old, is super talented, and has a chance to be a really special player. We had the second pick in the draft in Brandon Miller. We we're really excited about Brandon Miller. Uh, he showed signs of what he's going to be in summer league, but there is so much upside there. Uh, and obviously, Miles Bridges is coming back. We have a young starting center in Mark Williams who has a huge amount of potential. We have a number of other young players that were drafted over the last two or three years that we're excited about. Obviously, Nick Smith is another kid who we drafted this year. And there's some, some vets on the team as well, in, in, particularly in Gordon and Terry, that can help uh, develop the young kids. But there's a core here. I don't. You know, it'll be interesting to see how the year plays out, and uh, we think we have a young core uh, that can turn into, uh, over time, obviously we're very young, but over time we have a core that can, that can turn into the basis for a really good basketball team. I'd like to turn attention off the court for a second and look at the community. This team has always been extremely committed to the community in Charlotte and surrounding areas. I know that that's important to both of you as well. How much more do you look for us to continue to be committed and really even amp up efforts in the greater Charlotte community and extend it out? Yeah, we sat down today with, with, with Betsy Mack, who runs you know, Swarm to Serve, and you know, it's a big part of, of what we want to do here. I think what's unique and one of the things we tried to do with our ownership group is you know, bring in some local owners. You know, we thought it was really important to connect to the community um, and really, you know, give back to the community. So they're going to join the board. We're going to join the board. You know, I know there's an upcoming gala uh, in October. We'll be there, and you know, we're going to ask you know other owners to, to make some financial commitments because you know we think uh, there's a significant opportunity to, to not just win on the court, but but to actually impact lives off the court. And so it's something we do in our own personal lives. And you know, I have a foundation, and I believe Rick does too. And it's something that we can do uh, to impact lives here in, in North Carolina. So we'll be doing a lot more of that. Yeah, I mean, I think w when when you have the privilege that that we do to to be invested in, in a team as meaningful to a community as as this is, it's our obligation to give back, and it's it's all of our obligation to give back, both as a team, as individuals, as all of our owners, and it's going to be a big part of what we do. Uh, I think we also think and so that, that that's really meaningful for all all of us. Uh, I also think it's important that we are local owners, and so we do have local representation, and we can talk about that. I just agreed to buy a, an apartment here. I plan to spend a lot of time here and be in the community. Gabe will be in the community. We're going to be part of this community. We are not going to be owners that fly in and fly out and don't spend time here. And so this is going to be, it's important to us that, that people know who we are 
and that uh, we're part of the Charlotte community. I can't thank you both for spending some time with us today. I know it's been a busy day. There's a lot going on. But as we wrap up here, is there one message that each of you would like to just deliver to Charlotte Hornets fans just to kind of close as we start this new era of Charlotte basketball? Yeah, I mean, you can just feel the excitement here. We're excited. I think, uh, you know, we've had the chance to meet a lot of our employees and, and we've been really impressed. Uh, a lot of really long tenured people and you know, we're optimistic. We're looking forward to investing behind the team. And you know, we think there's a great foundation here and it's our objective to build on that and, and really see great things in the future. I would just say, look, we're, we're, we are going to build something great here with, along with all of our, our fans and the city at large. And um, the, the, uh, we look out at the next 20 years, it's an incredibly exciting time for all of us. Well, we can tell you're excited. I know everyone here is excited and I know our fans are excited. So thank you very mu much for joining us. For Rick Schnall and for Gabe Plotkin, I'm Matt Ruchensky with Hornets.com. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Matt.